Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Many of you think I've got a huge ego, merely by the fact that I speak into a very big microphone. I sit up here in my ivory tower and I cast judgment on people who call in, celebrities, people too downtrodden to defend themselves, various folks who are fat and fugly. You're just simply convinced that it's all about having a big ego. The reality is uh, nothing of the kind. I don't have a big ego. In fact, I tend to uh, like to keep myself uh, in, uh, blended into the background when I'm in public. I don't go out to be seen. I don't go to big celebrity-laden parties all the time uh, just to be noticed. I'm more likely to stay home at night, watch a DVD. But at this hour of the program, I would like to uh, I'd like to um, toot my own horn. I would like to brag about something. One of the major accomplishments of my life. And it's one that I'm really proud of. And no, it has nothing to do with what I do for a living or how much money I make. It has nothing to do with money, power, or fame. Although the fact that I accomplished it made money, power, and fame possible. This is not something you do by accident. This is not something that you uh, do simply by uh, coincidence. Because I hear from all the people who uh, somehow screw this up. They somehow don't pull this off. You have to have laser-like focus to be able to do what I've done. A major accomplishment, if I do say so myself. Some people are proud of getting the gold watch or having what they consider to be perfect kids. You know, those people with the bumper stickers that their kid is on the honor roll at Hollywood High School or whatever. Come on. How hard is it to be on the honor roll at Hollywood High School? You been there? How hard is that? Be kidding me. But um, some people are proud of other accomplishments. You know, they get a 50 cent an hour raise or they get a title. They get an office. They get their own business card with a title on it. And a, their own phone number. Some people are proud to be the head greeter at Walmart. I used to be just an assistant head greeter, and now I'm the head greeter. We all have our accomplishments in life. We all have things we're proud of. Somebody set that high school scoring mark, the high school basketball team. It stands to this day, and they're proud of it. Somebody was the homecoming queen. She's proud of it. That's right. We all have pride in uh, whatever it is we do. I, you know, I, I, the fact is, many of us are proud of things. I, frankly, it took no work or thought at all, no creativity, no nothing. Just so we could be proud of something. You know, how about the people who are proud of having uh, octuplets? Like they did anything except take fertility drugs. I mean, what kind of accomplishment is that? you got to be kidding. The accomplishment I'm proud of took thought. It took thinking ahead. It took self-realization. It took a willingness to withstand criticism. It took uncommon maturity at a very young age. And continuing maturity throughout. I had to withstand prodding, begging, cajoling, pleading, harassment from any number of people, men and women both. Please do this, please do this, please do this, please do this, please do this. And I didn't do it. 
And I'm proud, proud of myself. I have to say I'm proud. And I'm not done. What I've accomplished, I will continue. I'm not done yet. I can't wait to continue. It's a daily accomplishment. No, Dean, it's not that I banged a chick from every uh, chick in Latin America. No. It's not what it is. And I haven't done Brazil yet. Just in case you're wondering. I've done a lot of El Salvador, but no Brazil. No, no. This is a different accomplishment altogether. Can you guess what it is? It's not an accident. Oh, now, see, now Dean guessed. That's, that's what it is. This was not an accident. This was by design. Some people like to say it was uh, an accident or because of some shortcoming on my part. No, no. No, no. This is something I planned on as a child. I can tell you how old I was. I remember the day I thought about it. I was eight years old. Eight. At eight years old, I had a uh, five-year-old sister and a three-year-old sister. And my mom was uh, just about to get pregnant with my brother. And it was at eight years old that I decided, I am never, ever going to have a child. Ever. Ever. Five years after I was eight, I was 13, I had sex for the first time. And at that time, I was determined there would be no children. Various things have happened over the years. I did drugs and had sex. I got drunk and had six, sex. Condoms broke. Hail Marys were thrown. Abortions were had, and I paid for them. I broke up a marriage over a woman who said she didn't want to have kids and then changed her mind after we got married. See ya! I was with women who uh, just suddenly, uh, like, a, like a bomb, just dropped this bomb all of a sudden. I'd love to have your kid. I had one relationship break up where a woman said to me, I talked about this on the air recently, a woman said to me, I can't believe we're breaking up, but the worst part is I don't even have a kid to remember you by. And you know, by the way, there's a lot of women out there, that's the lovely parting gift they get after they leave a relationship. They get to look into that kid's eyes, but they're really thinking about the guy who nailed them, who knocked them up kind of uh, like that little collection of stuffed animals women have and they can remember each guy that gave them each animal where they were how they got it it is a museum of past relationships women have tried my parents tried my mother told me for years I would change my mind that one day I would change my mind I didn't Friends have had kids, relatives have had kids, people have brought their kids over, people have said, hold the baby, and put the baby in my arms, and then laughed out loud, seeing how I didn't know how to hold a child or what to do. Very funny. They thought if they put a baby in my arms, they did. I would just say, oh, I have to have one of these. Didn't work. Now at age 49, people love telling me how unhappy I must be, how unhappy I will be, how lonely I will be, how miserable I will be. I am not miserable. I'm going to wine cellar containing 800 children. I cradle each and every one. Some I love more than others. Some I love less. 
but they're all my children, and they're all at 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. Yes, this year, while you were having uh, your summer fun at Legoland or Chuck E. Cheese, I was in Bordeaux, France, forced to taste 57 wines in five days. I was in Madrid, Barcelona, San Sebastian, Bilbao, Spain, driving around in a Mercedes-Benz. I went to Biarritz to the beach. Yes, I was forced to spend a couple of days in Paris this summer. Yes, before the riots, indeed. Yes, I was forced to spend four days on the beach in Cartagena, Colombia. I did not have to get child care. I did not have to uh, bring a baby seat. I did not have to uh, figure out how to get baby formula in a third world country. Did not happen. Did not happen. Next year, when I go to Tuscany and when I go to Australia, I'll be thinking of you flying to Orlando, parking in the goofy parking lot. I'll be thinking of you as I am making my way around uh, the wineries of southern Australia. As I am making my way from Florence to Tuscany, I'll be thinking about you. It's a major accomplishment, and I'm proud of it. And what is amazing to me is how many of you are so smug in thinking I am miserable, in thinking that I've made a big mistake, that I could still correct, because I'm a guy, after all, and I could still knock somebody up, and I could still, at 67 or 68 years old, go to my kid's high school graduation. I could do that. But I won't. So excuse me for being proud. No point being humble when you have such a major accomplishment as not having children. As avoiding all of the pressures of your friends, your peers, society, girlfriends, wives, ex-girlfriends, your parents. They all push, push, push. Everybody trying to tell you how miserable you are. I'm not miserable. I'm happy, and I'm proud, and I have every right to be proud, don't I? Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. You have got to be like the lowest rung on the evolutionary ladder I've heard in a long time. Really? Yeah. The Tom Likas Show. No! Tom Likas Show. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Danny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Danny. What's going on? Just doing a radio show here, Danny. I'm 21, and I made that decision when I was 18. Never have kids. Ever, ever, ever. You know, I got a family, my brother and my sister, they have kids, but I never want to have that responsibility. Good for you. You know, it's like, I mean, I can handle it. It's just, why? Why put myself through all that, you know, through 18 years of misery? And run the risk, your kids won't talk to you, they'll come out with two heads, Yeah. welded course, together, yeah. you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, you never know. I mean, what if you pick the wrong woman, too, and she leaves you, and ex like, and she gets the money for the kid, too. Right, and you're paying forever? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I probably will end up getting married, but not till like, I'm late 30s, if that, if I ever get married, you know? Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. I'm on. See, that's the accomplishment that I, I wish I could have achieved, mm -hmm. uh, w w was never getting married. Looking yeah. back, that's my regret in life. I wish I could have never gotten married. Yep. You know what? I have a brother who's married, wants to get divorced. I mean... I've seen what happens, you know. I'm learning from his mistakes, you know. Yep. So I know exactly what to go through. But, yeah, I never want to have kids. I mean, I got two, a niece and a nephew. I love them to death, but that's just not for me, man. Thank you, Danny. All right, Tom, can you blow me up? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Casey is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Casey. Yeah, I just had my first abortion. It was the best thing I ever done. Very I've good. Been going out. I've been going out with Getting the job for... done. What's that? Getting the job done. Oh yeah, can't deal with the kids, man. And uh, did she want to have that baby? 
Yes, she did, but I couldn't be with her. I knew I couldn't support the kid. I got places to go and places to be, so couldn't have the kid. And uh, how'd she react when you told her that? Uh, she pretty much had the deal. <laughs> told her I wasn't going to support it. She didn't have a job, so <laughs> that's the deal. She could have had it anyway and made you go to work. Yeah, she could have. Very didn't. lucky. <laughs> Yo, well, hey, that's my story. Hi, right, Casey. Hey, you have a good one. You too. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Vicky on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I'm Now I'm 42, and I'm too old to have kids anyway, but I'm kind of like you. From the time I was young, I never wanted a baby. All my friends, aren't you, you know, when you grow up, you're going to have babies, babies. I'm like, I can't even, it's kind of like I never, ever envisioned it. I never pictured it. I never saw it. It was never anything I desired. I like kids, but I don't. I never wanted one of my own. I, I, and to this day, I can't imagine how people get up in the morning, take care of the baby, get the baby there, and go to school. Go, I just, I can't. It's, it boggles my mind. Yeah, and, I feel the same way. By the way, don't misunderstand. I love kids. I don't I hate do kids. Too. I love them. I do too. I love my niece. I'm like the other call. I love my nieces and nephews. I think I was supposed to be a professional aunt. That way, I can spoil them. But you know what? Then I can send them home. And I can't wait to take my niece to Vegas to get her tanked on her 21st birthday and go pick up shoes. <laughs> but it's weird. And in the workplace, you run into women. Oh, you never had a baby. Uh-huh. So? Oh, but you don't know. No, maybe I don't know. But I know what it's like to go to Vegas on a Saturday night, drive up, drive back. I don't have to worry about getting grandma and a sitter. And it's just... I don't know. Maybe I'm a freak, and a lot of women don't understand, but right. there are some of us out there that, too. I'm not married either. I By the way, kids. those who say if you don't have kids, you don't understand, uh -huh. uh, many of us uh, who don't have kids had younger siblings. I had three of them. I had to babysit. I had to change diapers. Uh, I had to talk to these children uh, as children. My, my brother is 10 years younger than I am. So, wow. you know, when I was 13, he was 3. So believe me, I do have experience with children. And my attitude about it was, with three siblings, I did my time. Yeah, you did. And I never, I never, I had older siblings, but I, and I never liked babysitting. I never, I just never liked being around babies. I just didn't get it. They're fine, they're cute, goo goo, gear, take it back. I don't want to hold it anymore. I'm just not. I don't know. I have a guy gene or something. I don't know. Oh, look at you. That's my story. All right, Vicky. Thank you. Thank Love you. Ya. Appreciate Bye. the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. One of the proudest accomplishments of my life. I have successfully made it to 49 years old. Still no kids. And I'm proud. Shane on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, I was um, calling in. I happened to hear this, and it really struck me because I was in the seventh grade, and I decided I would never have kids, thanks to my science teacher bringing in a videotape of his wife giving birth. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, it was a, like a fish on a slab going womp, womp, out comes this baby. I knew right then and there I was never going to go through that. Uh-huh. And do you get a lot of crap from people? Uh, no, actually, I don't. Really? Uh -uh. Wow. Because I've been hearing it forever. No, I mean, I enjoy kids, other people's kids. I've done the babysitting thing, all that kind of stuff. I really do enjoy children. I just, I don't want to have them. Right. And I feel the same way. I like children, well, you know, on my terms, when I want to have them around. I want them to be other people's responsibility. Exactly. If I have to teach a human being how to wipe its own ass, I'm out. <laughs> Let somebody else do that. Then I get the good stuff, you know. I get to be an uncle. I get to uh, see other people's kids. Great. Uh, you know, it's fun. Yeah, and then I get to give the kid... You don't the, have to discipline them. Right. And then I get to give the kid back. Usually ruined permanently in some way after spending time with me. Well, if you didn't do your job right, they wouldn't be scarred. You, no. can, you, can, <laughs> you can only imagine... If I get a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old boy into my possession for a day, what I would say to it? I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shay. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Chris. 
I just wanted to tell you that I totally, totally agree with you. I get the same crap as you do. Oh boy. And as soon as we moved over here to the US, that's the first thing we always get asked. Do you have kids? No. Oh, why not? Oh, it'll change your life. Oh, you'll never be the same. Yeah, I won't have time for myself. Uh, well, exactly. And, and what's wrong with having time for yourself? I know. My husband and I enjoy just us two. I mean, we have two dogs. They are my children. Yeah. And people go, oh, no, that's not the same. And I'm like, bugger that. I, I'd rather not have kids, thanks. Yeah. And look at the kind of vacations you can take. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, before we moved over here, we used to come over here for vacation. We've been Great Barrier Reef. We went everywhere. We didn't have to take stupid little kids with us. Ah, where are you from? Australia. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no kids, no worrying about that. Now that you're here, my God, you can go anywhere. Look at all the great places you can go just in California. That's right. And then when we go to Vegas, we don't have to worry about, you know, worrying about where the kids are going or anything right. like that. Exactly. You don't have to so, worry about, uh, you know, them running out of cigarettes in the casino or any of that stuff. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, as soon as I heard you saying that's what you were proud of, it was like, that is exactly what I'm proud of as well. And, and I, I, it's time that people like you and me and the rest of us, uh, that, you know, treat this as the accomplishment that uh, that it is instead of being defensive about it. That's right. I mean, I get so annoyed. You go out to dinner and I all, I don't know. They, I must have a sign on my face saying, please sit me next to someone with bloody kids. Because it just, oh, forget it. Like, I'd rather just stay at home then. Boy, I agree with you. Tom, like it. Tom, like it. 100, 500, Tom. Uh, People fantasize about 14 and 15 and 16 year old girls all the time. What are you going to do? Put them all in prison? Put everybody up to a lie detector test? Ask people if they fantasize about the girl across the street when she wears a thong bikini? You're going to put these people in prison? What are you talking about? Well, where do you draw the line? I drew the line for you, you idiot! Get off the phone! The Tom Likey Show. Bum. Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. I was sitting here gloating over the biggest accomplishment of my life. No, not becoming a self-made multi-millionaire. That would not have even been possible. Had I not achieved the greatest accomplishment of my life, going 49 years childless. That's how I pulled off all the rest. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Uh, Tom, I want to know why you, had, uh, why you got married, even though you say the only reason to get married is to have kids. Well, I learned that by getting married. You have to understand, many of the things you learn in life, you learn by making a mistake and then hopefully learning from it. Uh, in my case, it took a couple of times before I learned from it. And uh, it was all about that. Um, I, I give you that advice based on a world of experience. I see. All right. Well, thanks. Take me out tribal style, please. Here you go. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Kota nenenge, asika mama. Oya kota nenenge, asika mama. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Eunice on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Eunice? Yes, I care. I'm doing great. Yes, I feel great. And I like your show. I, uh, my English is not perfect. I am here for four years in the United States. Where are you from, Eunice? From Colombia. Colombia. Okay. Yes. And some uh, another day you were talking about Cartagena. Yeah, I was just there. Uh, I, okay, you say something, I guess it's not exactly right. You say the people there are very, very, very rich or very, very, very poor. Yeah, I didn't... And we don't have a middle class. I didn't see much of a middle class like you see okay, here, no. I'm going to tell you something. What's that? Okay, in Colombia we don't have rich, rich people. We have r some rich, some of their... Some of them, you know, those are a guerrilla or narco-traffic people. And a few rich people, and also in Cartagena, many people who have properties, 
these people are the middle high class, but they are not really rich. And uh, the poor is like no in Africa because in Africa the people die because they don't have uh, food to eat. Oh, I'm not saying it's like Africa, but it's certainly I like it's either. like the Dominican Republic, another place I've been that's me, very poor. When I hear when I heard that, I I feel like. And in Colombia, the people are like dying because they don't have food. And it's not, it's not like that. It's different. We have a lot of people poor in Colombia. Almost 70% we are poor. Um, but um, we can live. Well, that doesn't, li that doesn't leave much room for a middle class if 70% of the people are poor. Yes, and in Colombia it's the same. And also I find out, like, everything happening in the United States, it's the same in Colombia. It's the same, I guess, around the world. Really? I, I travel a lot, and I find out it's some, something similar. But the topic today you are talking about... Well, it's, about it's not like the United States at all. I mean, I, I, spent, uh, I spent several days uh, there. And uh, for one thing, uh, let, let's take the peso, for example. Uh, it's not worth anything. That's not like the United States. Uh, okay. Uh, it's different because Cartagena is... is you, you can find... Most of the people are the tourists, and um, the people from Colombia, they don't go to Cartagena. Well, they, 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 they have money, they go They don't to go on Cartagena. vacation to Cartagena, but, they, but there's people who live there. Those are the people on the street who follow you down the block trying to sell you fake Cuban cigars, who are trying yes. to change money with you. You know, because this is whatever, uh, you know, this is a very bad custom, and always I... I don't know if I am right, but, you know, the priests teach us to give money and then you go to the heaven and some like that. And in my country, it's very popular that, but really now the people are realizing, and also we have a commercial there, an advertisement. They say don't give money to the children because behind the children and the, all the people and all people who take advantage of them. Right. And now Colombia realizing many things, and we are working on that. And I can tell you, my, my country is very nice. I found... I had a great time there. I enjoyed it. The people are so nice. It's That's like true. The news says, uh, it's not, if you go uh, uh, walking down about this uh, sunny street, somebody's going to kill you or whatever, it's different. It's very different. But... Uh, from the topic uh, you were talking today, the topic you were talking today about the babies, wow. I feel the same way. I I am 42 years old. I never, ever want to have a baby. I don't remember if I was 6 or 15 or 20 or 30, I don't know. And if I was very afraid, afraid to have a baby. You were afraid to have a baby? Always. I don't have, I don't want it. I have a niece, nephews, I have family, and I love the children. Now, in, in Colombia, there's not a lot of people who go around saying, I don't want oh, to have yes. a baby, are there? Oh, yes. There are. Many women. Really? They don't want it. And also, sometimes you say, oh, the women, they, they are, when they are not nice, they are intelligent. I can tell you, in my country, you can go to many universities. You are going to find a beautiful ladies. They are studying university and they are intelligent. Yeah, well, that's that's not America. Clearly, that's uh, another oh, country. I don't know, but I can invite you to Universidad Javeriana or whatever many universities we have there. You are going to find a. Beautiful. Really? Hot yeah, chicks go to nice. college in Colombia, huh? Yes, you can go over there. In this country, this is where the fat and the, the fugly chicks go to college. Mm. Hot chicks okay. don't have to go to college. Okay, you must go to the University of Javeriana or... Uh, we have three or four. I don't, I don't remember the names now, but we, it's a beautiful lady. I am no ugly. I am no beautiful. I am a normal. I say I'm normal. You're I'm normal. Oh, what are you on a scale of one to ten? Some people say I am nice because I have blue eyes or whatever, but really I am not. I, I, not. I feel like a normal lady. I see. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Never I want to get married until five, five years ago. Five years I ago? Never wanted. Did you marry an American? Yes. That's how you ended up here? 
Yes, this is the reason because my husband lives in here. And But, you know, I have a very good guy. I recommend it if you find a very good person. But the point is the people is looking for somebody to marry. Right. But they never find out what is their interest, what is the point they like or they don't like it first. Right. They just meet it, and if they like to make the love, they just marry it. But they and does your husband want to have a baby? Uh, he wants sometimes, but he does. you know, I and you tell him, forget it. it. You're not doing it. No, and also I can now because I am 42. I can have a baby now. Oh, you could. But I no, but I don't want it. I mean, and also Madonna I had a baby. You know, many people. What is she? Seventy. Many babies in this in this world right. are hungry. They don't have food. They don't have love. Why? If one day he's. Uh, Dying for a baby, we can adopt one. You can right? adopt one, yes. Yes, yes. and give them good opportunity to the child. But for me, it's not have a baby because I want to look myself in another person. I don't want that. Well, I'm, prou I'm proud of you. That is an accomplishment. It's the Tom Leggy Show with Bob. Hello. Yeah, Tom, this subject hits just right to the heart. This, Me and my wife have been talking about this since we got married three years ago, and it's just constantly with the people asking us when we're going to have children, and it's just it's way, way too much. It's almost rude to this point. So you don't want to have kids. Your wife doesn't want to have kids, but everybody else wants you to have kids. Well, you know what the funny thing is, is and I'm sure people have brought this up several times, but we just got back last week from an eight-day vacation to Mexico. We've got two more planned this year to Mexico and a trip to Hawaii planned this year. And it's just like, why would you want to give that up? No, nah, I wouldn't. And I haven't. No, and I wouldn't. And there's like two other subjects here. I'm not sure if anybody's brought this up, but first of all, what it does to a woman's body. Yeah. Yeah, and so... Those like, C-section scars are not exactly attractive. And we're sitting in Mexico. I'm sitting at the bar. I don't like laying out in the sun. My wife's laying out in a bikini with her killer little body sitting there. And you know what? I don't want to see her laying out after she has a kid. Yeah. Not only With that. all those stretch marks and oh. that, that flap of skin. Exactly. The one that no amount of uh, ab crunches can get rid of. That uh, little pouch. Absolutely. And the other thing I, people should take into consideration, too, is let's say there's a man and a woman who are married, and they've found out they can't have children. And so every time somebody asks them, when are you going to have children, it's like sticking a dagger in them because they can't have kids. Right. I mean, my wife was saying this the other day, don't they think that, you know, maybe they should think about asking somebody that before they ask it? Because what if they can't have children? Then you're just devastating them every time you ask that question. Yeah, what if they're barren? True. I love that word, barren. Barren's a very good word for it. Yeah. And, and you know, me and I'm starting up my own company soon. We can take off and go to Mexico. We both love children. And I've heard several people say this before. I borrow them for a weekend. Borrow is a good word, by the way. Borrow them for the weekend. Enjoy their company. Have fun with them. And then give them the boot right out the door. Right. And they have to know how to wipe their own ass when you borrow them, okay? You don't yeah, want to be... No ass wiping lessons. No, oh, not for me, buddy. They're, no. they're already grown enough where they can wipe their own asses. That's good. With that. That's right. I can, I can barely wipe my own ass, let alone a child. <laughs> right on time. Hey, take me out Kobe style. They won last night. Here you go, Bob. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Look at the beats in my heart. The air I breathe. She's so special to me. All right, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let me get Norm in here before the end of the hour. Norm. Norm. Norm will wait through the 20 seconds of delay. And by the time he says hello, we're going to be just about out of time here. Norm? Yes, sir. All right, Norm, I understand you have something to say. Go right ahead and say it. 
Not a question about it. The Tom Likas Show.